Shinji is dead. He died at the hands of Strega protecting Ken. Although to the world outside, it's deemed an act of gang violence. Your group knew that this was a possibility from the beginning. That they've all had many, many opportunities to die already. But they never were really prepared for the shock of this happening. If there is one silver lining that could be brought up in all of this, it's that, at least from here on, things can't get worse. The passing of Shinji, as you might guess, is hardest on Akihiko and Ken. Akihiko mourns his loss, but also seems to draw strength from it. He recognizes why Shinji did what he did, and decides that it would be best to follow in his ideals. You can't change the past. Remember it, learn from it, but don't dwell on it. A new resolve is born within him, and a new power is his reward. Ken, on the other hand, is pretty lost. The man he hated, the one he blamed for his mother's death, just died protecting him. He's torn between so many conflicting emotions, and he has no idea what to do. Akihiko finds him in an alleyway. He doesn't patronize him, nor give him an answer for his problems. He simply tells Ken that he needs to accept that death is something that happens. Whether he joins them and keeps fighting, gives up and does nothing, or somewhere in between, nobody can decide his future but Ken himself. After he says his piece, Akihiko walks off, but his words seem to have struck a chord in Ken. He realizes that the anger and the need for revenge he felt against Shinji stemmed from a simple fear of being abandoned, of trying to force a blame for the hurt he felt on someone. But. He has the strength to forge his own future. He's ready to accept the darkness of his past and put it behind him. With his new resolve, he too awakens to a new power. The month slowly passes. There should only be one shadow remaining, one final ordeal to overcome. You spend most of your time preparing, but you find a bit of time to hang out with your friends. Your overflowing charm manages to interest two of the most attractive people in the school, and you take Koromaru for some walkies. It's around this time that we get a scene of Fuka. She's been feeling depressed lately as she feels responsible for what happened to Shinji. To make matters worse, her former bully, but now close friend Natsuki, is transferring out of your school. Surprisingly, she has some words of wisdom to give Fuka before she leaves. It helps Fuka realize that, for all this time, she's never really acted for herself. She's constantly worried about not fitting in, and always acts in a way that she thinks people expect her to act. Her friend's words help her realize what she truly wants out of life. She wants to help her friends so that they'll never be unhappy. Not because it's what they expect, but because it's what she wants to do. And so she is well awakened to a new power, resolving to work hard from now on. It's not too much longer until the next full moon appears. Only one shadow remains until your goal is realized. However, one thing stands in your way. Strega. Takaya and Jin confront you before you can face the shadow. They try one last time to convince you that destroying the Dark Hour would be a mistake. But at this point, it's too late to negotiate. They engage your group, having similar powers to your own. However, by the law of numbers and the fact that they look like two very skinny boys who haven't eaten in days, they prove no match for your group and fall pretty easily, as you provide them with the beating of a lifetime. 
The two are thoroughly defeated, but refuse to accept your ideals. They won't live in a world without their power, without personas. And so, they jump. Strega is finally finished, but the night is not. The final shadow is still waiting for you. You regroup and confront the beast. It's a massive, droopy-looking marionette known as the Hanged Man. It's the toughest shadow you've faced so far, but you've come too far to be stopped here. It's not too long before it falls, and... You're victorious. Y you did it! The shadows are dead, all twelve defeated by your hands. There's not really much else to do but celebrate. You've achieved your goal and you give a hearty cheer before returning home, planning to have a massive party the next day. However, as you're waking up the next morning, you're met with another surprise. Pharos. He's appeared to you a lot earlier than he ever has before. But rather than giving you some vague warning, he gives you a simple fact. This is the last we'll ever see of him, but he's gonna miss you. So, no more shadows and no more kids in striped pajamas. Things are looking up. After school, everyone returns home to find a massive platter of sushi provided by the Kurijo group. Even Mitsuru's father shows up and you all partake in a little celebration. Although the rest of the world may never know what you've done, you've finally accomplished your goal and possibly saved humanity. You pass the night away laughing, eating, and even take a group photo. But, as the night goes on longer and longer, you notice that Igis and the chairman still aren't present. They claim that they were going to be late, but it's getting close to midnight. The dark hour, as it has for many nights before, once again envelops the world. But what exactly does this mean? Are there more shadows? Was there another meaning to the Dark Hour? Is there even a way to stop the Dark Hour? A bell echoes out across the city. It's coming from Tartarus. The fact that Igis and Ikutsuki are missing is starting to appear more ominous. Your group gather together and head to Tartarus. Ikutsuki is there, along with a, for lack of a better term, robotic looking Igis. He reveals his plan. From the beginning, he knew that destroying the shadows would not stop the Dark Hour. No, if anything, it would do the opposite. By destroying the Twelve Shadows, you were really reuniting them. For they were formerly one being. A being known as Death. Nikutsuki spent years working on this. He worked with Mitsuru's grandfather, with her father, and even doctored Yukari's father's video. He had created seeds with the express purpose of reuniting the shadows and creating death. When death appeared, Akutsuki would be there to rule over this new, reborn land. The man is obviously insane and your group readies themselves to attack him. But it seems that he has Igis under his thumb. She stops your group, immediately knocking everyone unconscious. Siru's father is being held at gunpoint by Igis. Ikutsuki rambles on about how great his plan was before ordering her to kill him. However, it seems that there's still a little bit of the old Igis inside of her, as she hesitates, unable to bring herself to pull the trigger. Ikutsuki, frustrated at this, pulls out his own gun. Father, 
Father! Father! I guess we will end this. Execute the sacrifices now. What the? Damn it, you! You defective machine! I'll do it myself! What the? get it, do you? This useless, pathetic world will gradually fester over time. Only its destruction can bring about its salvation. And then, at long last, I will rule over the new world. <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> Natsuru's father is dead, leaving her alone in the world. It almost seems like you've gone back to square one. Your group has no idea where to go from here. The objective you've been fighting for for all this time had maybe led to a future that would have been better off if you'd done nothing. You have no idea what's waiting for you in the darkness ahead. You head home in silence. Your group call a meeting the next day, although Mitsuru is absent, dealing with her father and her family's company. It can't be easy. The chairman's belongings are almost all but gone. Obviously he'd been planning this for a long, long time. What little he did leave behind doesn't really give you much info on what to work on. The group decide that all you can really do is try and be as prepared as possible. The only clue that remains is Tartarus. After the meeting, Fuka hands Yukari a disc. It's the undoctored footage of what her father recorded on that night ten years ago. She watches it in private, and it essentially confirms what Akutsuki had said, that under no means should you destroy the Twelve Shadows. It also leaves a message for Yukari herself. Her father tells her that he loves her, and that he's sorry things had to end this way, but it's the only way he had left. Finally seeing his last words and realizing that he was the good man she believed he was, Yukari awakens to a new power. The future may be veiled in a thick fog, but time endlessly marches on. At school, a new transfer student appears. His name is Ryoji, and he gets on good terms with Junpei, although seemingly on pretty bad terms with Agius. He also managed to garner up enough courage to try Fuka's cooking, as well as show Elizabeth around your school. To make matters even more interesting, a school trip is coming up. The majority of your school head to the city of Kyoto, most of your group is pretty excited for the experience, but Mitsuru is still, understandably, very upset. One day, Yukari finds her standing by a riverbank. She claims that she's lost. Her entire reason for fighting was to save her father from the guilt of his past. She'd been fighting for so long to see him happy. Now, he's gone, and he's never coming back. What even is the point of continuing on from here? Yukari gives her a bit of a wake-up call. 
While the two have rarely had the opportunity to talk one-on-one, they really do have a lot in common. Both of their fathers played a role in the dark deeds of the past. Yukari says that her goal is to fix what her father caused and achieve what he couldn't so that he can rest happy. She recommends that perhaps Mitsuru could follow the same. Mitsuru realizes that Yukari is absolutely right. While her father may be dead, his wish is still unfulfilled. Her purpose will be to grant that wish. Finally finding a new reason to move forward, and a new friend, she too awakens to a new power. Ah, overcoming daddy issues. Such a fresh concept for the series to tackle. Moods are noticeably lighter for the rest of the trip, and after avoiding certain death, your group heads home. However, you're not home too long before Fuka senses something one night. It's Strega, but not Takaya or Jin. It's Chidori. Using her power, she manages to tap into Fuka's power and talks to your group directly. She offers a challenge, saying that she's in front of Tartarus, before ending the communication. Your group is obviously shocked, particularly Junpei. He rushes off ahead and your group quickly scramble after him. When you arrive, you find Junpei trying to reason with her, but she doesn't seem much for talking today, and without much provocation quickly attacks your group. She seems to have a supernatural level of regeneration, but, like the rest of Strega, she's unable to stand up to the power of your party. After the fight, she collapses, and Junpei once again rushes to her side. He demands an explanation. Chidori is scared, scared for the first time since she's joined Strega. Their mantra has always been to live in the moment, to accept death. Death is inevitable and nothing to fear. However, Chidori's time with Junpei has given her that fear. She's scared. Scared of losing him. Scared of not being able to see him again. She had attacked your party so that she could remove the source of that fear and go back to the way she was. The moment is cut short, though. Takaya and Jin appear behind her. They somehow seem to have survived the fall from the bridge. But they also aren't here to waste time, and Takaya pulls out a gun. <laughs> Junpei. I'm so happy you're awake. Chidori? Huh? I... I thought I was... I... I was wrong. I was scared and I blamed you for my heartache. I never felt that way before I met you, Junpei. And for the first time in my life, I... I realized what I wanted. And what is that? I... I want to be with you, Junpei. Forever. I... Um... I want to be with you, too. But it could never last. I'm different from you. Since the moment I gained my power, I've known the day I was going to die. What? Knowing that scared me, because I had never really thought about dying. And it made me realize that I wouldn't be with you anymore. Chidori. That's why this is how it should be. You can't die here, Junpei. Die? <clears throat> With her immense powers of healing, Chidori brings Junpei back from the brink of death. 
However, the strain of pouring so much power into him drains her of her own life. In her last few moments, she thanks Junpei for the time they spent together, and that she'll always be a part of him before passing on in his arms. These moments can't last forever, and those assholes from Strega are still here. With a whirlwind of emotions raging inside of Junpei, a new power erupts from within him. Strega back a bit, and they're forced to retreat. For now. However, your group is tired and still have to tend to the body of Chidori. You decide not to give chase, and once again, head home with a heavy heart. However, a few days later, an item arrives at the dorm. It's what few belongings Chidori left at the hospital. Among them is her sketchbook despite claiming that her work was just a bunch of misunderstood scribbles. Inside is an exceedingly detailed portrait of Junpei. It almost feels like a sign, and it helps Junpei come to terms with her passing. It's difficult, but he will fight by your side from now on with all the strength he has. The next few days are kind of tough for him, but he surprisingly finds comfort in a friend. Ryoji, who from time to time comes to visit the dorm to hang out with Junpei. During one of these visits, I guess once again voices her concern for him, claiming that he's dangerous. Your group kind of brush it off, which leads to I guess, uh, having an existential crisis. She talks about how she's not truly alive, how she is simply a machine. Even if she were to break down, she could simply be repaired. Kind of a lot of red flags popping up here, but your group seems to brush it off. In any case, the next night is once again a full moon. However, all the shadows have been defeated, so does that really mean anything anymore? That night, Fuka scans around looking for any activity, and there doesn't seem to be any shadows. However, Igis seems to be missing. Don't be foolish, I guess. There's no way you can win. I'm different than before. A machine is created for a purpose. Mine is to defeat you. I exist for nothing else. It doesn't have to be that way. if it cannot fulfill its purpose. I'm sorry. I'm afraid. Your group arrive at the bridge to find a broken down Igus and... Ryoji. It seems, once again ten years ago, on this very bridge, a powerful but incomplete shadow appeared. I guess, a weapon built to fight shadows, confronted it. She was sent to destroy it. However, it proved far too powerful for her, so she went for the next best option. She sealed it away in the only vessel available, a boy. 
Ryoji was that shadow that appeared ten years ago. The one that has been recreated by you destroying the Twelve Shadows. And that boy, be it fate or coincidence, is you. That boy inside of you, the death of your parents and your strange power, all came about because of that moment. Ryoji quickly collapses, and Hygus is out of commission, so you don't really get too much more of an explanation. The next day, after he's had some rest, Ryoji wakes up and explains everything to your group. He, as was said before, is the culmination of the Twelve Shadows, known as the Appraiser. His appearance signifies the summoning of death. A being known as Nyx will appear and bring about the fall of humanity. His simple existence is what draws her to the world. Ryoji, however, despite being a shadow, is truly upset about this. It seems that his time living inside your head has given him a love for humanity. He does not wish to see the fall of man. However, he does not know of a way to stop it. He claims it is unavoidable, inevitable, certain. There's nothing you can do to stop it. However, he does offer an alternative. While you cannot stop the fall, you can delay it by killing him. Doing so will erase all traces of the Dark Hour, and in turn erase all memories of the Dark Hour and the fall. Meaning that when it does arrive, you'll pass on in blissful ignorance. Your group starts to retort, but he brushes off your reply. He says you have until the end of the month to give him your answer, before disappearing. It's pretty heavy stuff, hard for anyone to really accept. The next week passes by in the blink of an eye, and yet every moment feels like an eternity. The dorm is filled with a dull silence for the majority of it. But your group do eventually come together and decide that things can't continue on like this. While none of them are quite ready to make a decision, they have to still at least do something. It takes some time, but thanks to the bonds that your group has built together, everyone eventually managed to come to an answer that they believe in. Though they all have different reasons for doing so, they all decide to fight even if it means they have to suffer. Time slowly ticks on towards the deadline. During that time, your intellect manages to pique Mitsuru's interest. And Elizabeth... I'd like you to guide me through it. Oh my. The night before the deadline, a welcome surprise awaits you. Igis is back, finally repaired from the damage done to her during her fight with Ryoji. However, she still seems to be having some trouble like before. She asks that your group please kill Ryoji so you don't have to suffer. Igis' purpose has always been the elimination of shadows, but now that a shadow has appeared that she knows she's not powerful enough to defeat, she does not understand why she's still here. What point do we really have to keep her around? You should just forget about her, and live life peacefully until the end. Your group try to explain the reason why you have to fight, but Igus just can't understand it. She's a tool without a purpose. She begs anyone to give her a purpose. But no one can give Igus a purpose. No one but herself. There's no one right answer, no one goal to follow. Sometimes everything you worked for fails. And what it means to live is to push past that failed goal and find a new one within yourself. I guess, while she may be a robot, has proved without a shadow of a doubt that she is indeed alive. She can create her own purpose in life and for once, truly, live. Your friend's kind words and the resolve deep within her awaken a new power. 
And at last, your party feels complete. Everyone is prepared for what is ahead of them, and the next night, as was said, Ryoji appears at your dorm. Ultimately, while all your friends have decided to fight, the final decision falls on you. You are the only one capable of killing Ryoji. He pleads with you, asking you to realize how pointless it is to fight. He even reveals his true form to you, to help you come to terms with the fact that killing him would just be killing another shadow. But it's not a difficult decision. You've known since the beginning what your answer will be. You will fight Nyx and aim to save humanity from its certain doom. Ryoji is upset but respects your decision. He tells your group the last details you need to confront Nyx. She will appear on the top of Tartarus exactly one month from now. The tower was essentially her altar, a predestined greeting for her arrival. With the information relayed, Ryoji leaves, wishing your group luck in the future. January looks to be a long month, but a sort of calm resolve envelops your group. While you may face your greatest challenge yet, the fact that you've all resolved to work together to fight it brings some comfort to your group. Most of your days are spent hanging out with your friends. You spend quite a lot of it with I guess. Night, however, your group work tirelessly. The end is in sight, and you will be at the top of Tartarus come the end of the month. And so, inevitably, the night arrives. Yet, your group is ready for the trial ahead. Before you leave to face Nyx, Yukari makes a suggestion. Once Nyx is defeated, the Dark Hour will likely disappear. And, like Ryoji said, when the Dark Hour disappears, so too will our memories of the Dark Hour. She would rather not lose those memories, much like the rest of your group. And so, everyone agrees to meet up on the roof of the school on graduation day. That way you'll have something to look forward to once you defeat Nyx, as well as something to remember. You head to Tartarus, for the last time. Of course, things can never be easy, and Strega is there waiting for you. You find Jin standing alone, trying to buy time for Takaya to reach the top. 
You ask him how Strega knows of Nyx, and it turns out they knew Akutsuki. It seems Akutsuki created them. But Jin doesn't feel like sharing any more than that, and attacks your party. He's definitely stronger than before, able to pinpoint your group's weaknesses. But after all the training you've been through, his scrawny ass is no match for your party. Afterwards, he explains what Strega actually is. It seems that during Mitsuru's grandfather's experiment, they had collected a bunch of orphans and began experimenting on them. They tried to artificially implant the power of Persona within them. Strega were the only surviving members of that experiment. They, like Chidori, had been doomed to die from the start. Takai, it seems, has always wished to see the end, to see humanity meet the same fate that he was destined. You'll leave the defeated Jin and race after Takaya. You find him right before the top. The greedy bastard really does just want to see humanity fall. If it's to be his fate, then it's to be everyone's fate. However, he also claims something else. That the coming of Nyx was not merely our fault or his fault or any one person's fault. The entirety of humanity wanted her to come. Subconsciously, they've known that there's no meaning in life. That it would be better if something came and scoured the world of life. I guess is surprisingly the one who counters his argument. While parts of humanity do indeed think like this, it is also inherently human to choose to fight those feelings. This frustrates Takaya and he attacks your party. He too has improved quite a bit since you last fought him, but his skinny shirtless powers didn't stand a chance against your resolve. You leave his unconscious body after defeating him and head to the top of Tartarus. Nyx's avatar appears before you what was formerly known as Ryoji. He is one with Nyx, one with death, an inevitability that cannot be stopped. Your group ready themselves and face him in the final battle. The battle opens with a story, the journey of the fool as he travels the arcana the journey every human embarks upon in this story called life. The fool first learns of himself, the ability to learn their own strength, as well as the ability to understand the untapped potential within them. Eventually, the fool begins to learn of the world outside of himself, the beauty that surrounds us, the courage that guides us, the forces beyond your control that inform you of bonds that can be formed by understanding another person, the goals you can create and follow yourself, the uncertainty that will present itself to you that can only be overcome by the help of others. However, the fool will also learn the ability to not fully rely on others, to be one with himself. He'll learn of fate and chance, forces beyond his control. He'll learn to withstand and overcome the hardships that come before him. He'll learn that even at the lowest possible moment, new opportunities can arise. But ultimately, the fool will learn that every path has one absolute. It matters not who you are. Death awaits you. The true form of Nyx confronts your party. It is a long, drawn-out fight. But never before has your group stood so united.
the resolve within everyone brings Nyx to its knees. However, as was said before, this was an ultimately pointless endeavor. Perhaps if more people were like you, the fall could have been avoided. But it is too late. The avatar of Nyx rises into the air. Since the beginning, the Velvet Room has been a place to cultivate the power within you. By forging unbreakable bonds with the people around you, you've given that power a place for it to flourish. The voices of your friends echo through your mind. You awaken to a new power, the power of the universe. With it, you can defeat that which cannot be defeated. The ever-rising elevator that is the Velvet Room finally comes to a stop.
it's over. The power within you seals away Nyx. The Dark Hour and Tartarus fade into the darkness as you are reunited with your friends. graduation day in a few days. Pretty soon, you'll be a senior in high school. However, you're feeling kind of out of it, and the past year just seems a little foggy. But you still take a bit of time to meet up with all your friends. Kenji is looking to get with another teacher next year. One day, man. One day. Yuko and Chihiro both thank you for helping to better themselves. They also possibly offer a little bit more than just a thank you. Keisuke reveals that he failed his first entry in becoming a doctor. However, he plans on retrying once again, knowing what his goal will be, and thanks you for helping him realize that. Kazushi thanks you for helping him to realize to look past his pride, to rely on others, and to become a better person. Mamoru seems content with his job. His co-workers really do seem to be looking out for him. Hidetoshi seems to have realized that power isn't everything. He wants to help people come to this realization, and plans on being a teacher. He thanks you for helping him realize this. Maiko seems to be happy living with her mom, and seems to have made a few new friends. She also has a... Uh, promise for you? Do not diddle kids, it's no good diddling kids! Nozomi seems to be becoming quite the accomplished food critic. Bunkichi and Mitsuko found out that they got the best of both worlds. Their son's tree will be replanted and look over the school for a long time. Mitatsu seems to have gotten back together with his family. He thanks you for helping him overcome his pride and reconnect with the life that he'd lost. Akinari's mother thanks you for the time you spent with him before he passed. That despite him living such a short life, he had been glad that he'd been given the opportunity to do so. <laughs> I'm actually tearing up a little at that. Tanaka seems to keep up his somewhat shady practices, but he seems to have learned a thing or two. Probably. Oh, and you also run into... <gasps> her. In any event, it's not long before the day of graduation arrives. I remember. Yes. With my father's death, I lost my purpose in life. Hang on. Wasn't I supposed to? Akihiko uh, 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 Senpai. What's yeah, up? Sit down, you two. But now, I have something to live for. No longer will I run from the future. I will face it head on, carrying out my father's will. I am resolved, and without reservation. Promise! 
I owe it all to my invaluable friends. And we have promised to never lose hope, no matter what tomorrow may bring. Senpai, we made a promise. Let's find him. And I guess too. Yes, I can hardly wait. Everyone, let's go! The wind feels so nice. This is my first time experiencing spring. But this season will eventually pass. After fighting alongside you and facing the world's end, I finally began to understand what it means to live. Thinking for yourself, not running away. Accepting the inevitable. All things eventually come to an end. Every living thing will one day disappear. Only by accepting this can one discover what they truly want, what the meaning of their life will be. I understand now why I was so tormented by my lack of strength. Protecting others became more than just an order I had to obey. I wanted to do it for my own reasons. I realized this once I decided to try and prevent the fall. When I thought I might never see you again, Something else became clear to me. What I wanted most. And so... I made up my mind. I decided that I would continue to protect you. I want to be your strength. I know I'm not the only one who can do this, but that's okay. <laughs> my life will be worth living if it's for this reason. doing? I understand now. So I should be happy. Hey! Everyone! I realize now that I have friends as well. You don't have to save the world to find meaning in life. Sometimes, all you need is something simple, like someone to take care of. I'll keep on living no matter what, so that I can protect you. Thank you for everything. You must be tired. Please, get some rest. I'll stay right here with you. Soon, all your friends will be here by your side. be by your side, protecting you. Forgot to read Pepe's letter. Pepe, I'm sorry. I'm sure your Komodo convinced your uncle. Ugh. 